What's up ladies and gentlemen, it's Nando back with one more video and what we have in front of me is the Galaxy Note 8. So for this video, I'm going to talk about a few things that have stood out to me. If you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. What I like to do is drop videos talking about battery life, about things that you should consider if you're getting or using that device. Um, and then ultimately finish off with a final review likes and dislikes because no device is perfect. So in this video, I'm going to talk about a few things that have stood out to me. This is the Note 8. It's been out for, what, three weeks now? By the time you're watching this video, probably a little longer. Um, I've had this phone essentially since it's come out. Basically, the day before it was launched in the United States of America, um, which I think was the 14th or the 15th. I think I got it like a day before. I apologize if the screen keeps timing out. I'll try to keep this video short and not ramble as much because for the final review, I'm going to have a few more things to talk about. So, for things to consider. Things to consider, I like to mention things that have stood out to me. And there's a couple things right off the bat that have done so. One, battery life on this phone is very, very good. The battery size on this phone is actually smaller than the previous Note 7, the one that blew up, the one that drove people crazy. And it's smaller than the other flagship, the Galaxy S8+. Plus. I apologize for all those notifications. I have airplane mode on, but Samsung Pay keeps pushing through with announcements or some crap. So, battery life on this phone is very, very good, although it has a smaller battery size than the S8 Plus, which I think is like a 3,500 uh, milliamp hour battery. This has like a 31 something, um, and it's definitely smaller than the Note 7. So maybe that's Samsung playing it a little safe, knowing that the Note line has that stigma attached to it now of, hey, you know, it blows up, battery size, blah, blah, blah. I was worried about that, but honestly, after using this phone for as long as I've used it, using it every day for over two weeks, battery life is not a concern. I've actually pumped out uh, a lot of hours of screen on time. Let me go ahead and show you some screenshots about that. So, real quick, um, I've got a bunch of screenshots here. These are basically all the same. I'm just gonna show you guys what to expect. Here, I had 4% battery life left. The phone was on for a day and six hours. That translated to six hours and 28 minutes of screen on time. Next screenshot, phone had 7% left. Phone was on for a day and 14 hours. That translated to five hours and 38 minutes of screen on time. 6% left, 19 hours and 21 minutes the phone was on. Screen on time, six hours and 35 minutes. So here's another one, 13 hours phone was on. 6% was left, four hours and 56. This one's probably one of the worst days. So basically, all of these screenshots, guys, 5 hours and 25, 5 hours 16, 7 hours and 22, all of these screenshots mean that the battery life on this phone is a non-issue. The only time that the battery on this phone has gone a little less down than um, any other days is if I'm using this phone in an area that I have poor cell service, but that's expected with all devices because the phone is using more battery to search for that cell service. So if you're concerned with battery life on the Galaxy Note 8, don't be. Um, I know there's other videos out there, charging time, wireless charging, fast time, videos on things like that. I haven't tested on this phone other than the charger that comes with it, which is fast charging. Um, and it charges pretty fast, not as fast as the OnePlus 5, not as fast as the Huawei Mate 9 that I've had before, um, but it is faster than like, you know, an iPhone or phones with, you know, not fast charging. So there's that. Um, so battery life is a non-issue. It's non-removable for anybody out there who thinks it is. It's not. So, you know, welcome to the smartphone of today. Very, very few phones have removable batteries. Now, another thing to keep in mind about this phone is this guy. You see this little grill right here? That's the only speaker grill on this phone. And it's very, 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 very sad that Samsung with this massive phone could only give us that little speaker right there. You know, even Apple gives us a bigger speaker grill, bigger front-facing speakers. This doesn't even have front-facing speakers. Um, and the only thing that that little speaker grill has going for it is that it's loud. Thankfully, it's loud. Um, because if it wasn't loud, then we would have serious, serious issues. Now, it's tinny. Uh, it doesn't sound great, but it's loud, so you do get away with it. But do keep that in mind. You're not going to have the best sound quality, in my opinion, with the Galaxy Note 8. Another thing to keep in mind, the fingerprint sensor on this phone is placed, you know, the same as the Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus. If you didn't try out that phone, 
Um, then just keep in mind that the placement on this phone sucks. Very few people are going to tell you that they like where the placement on this phone is. Getting a case like the official rugged case by Samsung um, helps kind of feel your way around because it's kind of indented in there now. Um, but I hate it. I hate where it is. I'm never going to like it. I deal with it. Um, because I hate having to smudge my lens instead of touching the fingerprint scanner. Now, I know that someone's going to say just muscle memory, get used to it. I have, but you know, people make mistakes. And when you're trying to unlock your phone quickly, you don't want to have to deal with having to take your time to unlock it accurately. So when you're coming from like the Google Pixel, the iPhones of the world, things like that, where you just place your phone, your finger, and it just works and it's fast and it's not going to touch anything else. That's what I wish Samsung did. They didn't. So it is what it is. Now, of course, Samsung also um, has the iris scanner and uh, face recognition. Um, it works okay, sometimes better than others. If it's you know dark out, if it's night out, then forget about it. It's not going to work at all or very, very, very um, infrequently. So you definitely need to have some light for those uh, front-facing iris scanning capabilities of this phone to do its thing. Um, iPhone X has that face ID, which they tout that the fact that it's going to work at night. So we'll see. But as of right now, this has their version of Samsung's uh, take on that crap. And, uh, it's not very, very good. It's just as good as the S8 and S8 plus and last year's note seven. Um, what else has stood out to me? The screen, uh, you, we already know that Samsung makes fantastic screens. This is, in my opinion, and many, many other people's opinions, the best screen on any smartphone. I like the fact that it's not as curved as the S8 and S8 Plus. Um, I think that obviously Samsung did that so that the S Pen worked better, so you have a flatter surface. I do got to point that out. It's not as curved, so in my opinion, it feels better in hand, a little grippier because the edges are sharper, are more squared off. Um... Camera's great, so that's pretty much it, man. Um, I will save some other opinions for a final review on this phone. Um, like I said always at the beginning of the video, during the video and after the video, no device is perfect, so there will be some dislikes on this phone. If you haven't subscribed already, hit that subscribe button so you know when I drop the next video. Definitely stay tuned for the final review on the Galaxy Note 8. I will definitely be doing some comparisons between the Note 8 and the iPhone 8 Plus and the Note 8, and the Sony Xperia XZ1. So that's it, guys. Like always, stay geeky. Peace. Salute. And I'll catch you in the next one. Adios.